All right, guys, assuming that you're ready to create your first game build, uh, here are the steps that I usually uh, take to finish off a game. So just head over to your file and build settings. This is where um, basically most of the work that we'll be doing um, in this video will be located, right? So if you go to your build settings, the first thing I want you guys to pay attention to is this scene uh, manifest, this scene list, right? So I want you guys to make sure that all of the levels that you have in your game, including credits and including menus, including any other scene that you want your gamers to see, every single one of them that you're using in your game should be listed here. So make sure that you go into each of those levels and click on add open scenes to list them over here. That's really important, guys, because if you fail to include any of your levels here and you try to load them, your game is going to crash, right? So just make sure all of those levels are listed here and they're checked like this, right? Make sure they're checked. So other than that, guys, in this course, we are focusing on PC, Mac, Linux standalones. But obviously, there are other ways that you can deploy your game as well. Um, but uh, in this lesson, let's focus on this one. So this is already selected. Make sure you select your target platform. So one thing that you got to keep in mind, guys, if you want to build Mac versions of your game, just make sure you're running this on a Mac PC. And on that, guys, uh, make sure that you change your target platform. So obviously, I'm running on a Windows architecture set to this. Um, which is 32 bit and 64 bit we're focusing on that and other than that development builds can be used if you want to publish like development versions like beta versions for your testers and things like that but obviously i'm going to keep that as production we're going to uncheck it compression method is fine uh the rest of these uh settings will be in the player settings guys pay attention to this area as well so the company name will be your company name it could be your name if you don't have a company but if you have a company put that in there and product name is the name of the game, right? So right now I'm just gonna call it the Lost Pendulum. And the version, uh, you can add 1.0.0 if you're about to launch it, right? So uh, there's also a versioning uh, method, guys. Keep this in mind. Um, these are three uh, parts to, there are three parts to this versioning. So let me just open up paint so I can better describe this, right? So let me just write 1.0.0. Okay, so I'm gonna increase the font size a little bit so it's more visible, all right, there we go. Okay, so guys, this right here is called a major, right? This is a major, right? So let me just put an arrow here. I'm not very good with paint, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so this right here is major. This right here is called minor, okay? And this right here is called patch. Okay, so this is basically the standard uh, way of versioning your games, any software in general that we always follow when deploying apps, softwares, games, and things like that, right? So let me just describe how you would increase these numbers uh, with every game release that you do. Major is if you're releasing a brand new version of your game with a bunch of new cool things, bunch of new features, bunch of new... Um, 3D assets and game modes and things like that, right? So you would always increase major for new things, like brand new things, right? Minor, if you are making any changes to existing behavior, right? So for example, you got a level, um, you got a level one, say you have a level one, and then you have a bunch of missions in there and things like that. So if you want to make modifications to that level and you want to include some of the some new changes, maybe some new characters and things like that to an existing one, existing level this is what you would bump. So it would be 1.1.0 if you were to bump minor versions, right? Major is if you're introducing a brand new game mode, a brand new level, a new multiplayer model, something that's groundbreakingly new, this would be bumped to 2.0, okay? Minor, if you're making changes to existing uh, features. Patch, if you're making a bug fix or some sort of fixes to any existing feature, right? So this is if you want to fix like a critical issue that's happening, some sort of rigid body issue where the characters are flying or something like that. So anything to do with bug fixes are known as patches, right? So that would be 1.0.1, 1 1.0.2 1 or so and so forth, right? You could have a combination of all three as well. You could be releasing a new major version, right? So in that case, it would be 2.0.0. But most of the time, uh, when you're bumping a major version, all of these will be zero. It'll be 2.0.0 because obviously groundbreakingly new change, meaning that obviously you don't need to bump these two. But say you're making a change to a minor and a patch together, that's possible. You can simply do uh, 1.1.0.1 uh, 
uh, to 1.1.3 or something, something like that. So keep that in mind. This is basically how you do um, versioning. There's also called semantic versioning in software, right? So this is something that you can do. Obviously, for your first release, guys, you can do 1.0.0 by default. Other than that, there's also default icons. So this will be the icon of your game, right? So for this, you need a texture 2D in your textures folder. Uh, with that, you can have a, a icon of your own. So how do you get a texture 2D, guys? Let me just remind you. Just make sure you have your icon in here and then go to inspector, change the texture type to texture uh, sprite 2D and then uh, simply hit apply, right? So after that, you can simply drag and drop it here. That'll be your default icon, okay? Uh, same thing for default cursor. You need a nice cursor icon. You can also get these from the asset store and make sure they're texture 2D. You can drag and drop them here, all right? Um, and then moving on guys, uh, let's dive deeper into icons. So you can have an icon for different screen sizes and things like that. You can override this and bring in different resolutions here. If you want to make sure that you get clearer icons on different PCs, right? So for example, example uh, on windows, you can obviously zoom into your icons as well. You can increase the icon size on your desktop desktop. So for scenarios like that, you got to have a very high res version of your icon as well. So it's a it's it's not a must have, but it's a good to have. All right. Um, and for resolution, guys, in this setting, you can change your full screen mode. You can have your game run full screen, which is most of the games, or exclusive full screen, which is basically uh, I I believe that's like a full screen. I don't I'm not sure what that is actually. To be honest with you, let me just look that up right now and then tell you guys. I'm not gonna lie, I've never used it. Exclusive full screen in Unity. Uh, without eight all prompts and do no clue. I'll 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 be honest with you, no clue. I'm not gonna use that anyways. Um, so I want you guys to focus on full screen or maximized or windows, right? Maximized window. I know for a fact that um, it'll basically be a window that's full screen, but you can still see the uh, the uh, the name at the top, the title by the top. Uh, you can go with windowed as well, where you'd set a certain size uh, to your game. That's basically how it works. And then uh, you can have Mac Retina support as well and running background, things like that. Obviously, I'm going to keep that full screen. And uh, other than that, guys, I would leave all of these by default, the same values. If you go to Splash Mage, there's another place where you can set up a splash. So by default, guys, in the uh, free version of Unity, uh, Unity logo is required. It's always going to be there. You can't get rid of it unless you get the Enterprise the Pro version. Um, other than that, you can also change the look of it. You can make a light background, dark uh, logo or light on dark. Animation can be dolly, static, custom, right? That sort of thing. Uh, dolly is by default. And then other than that, you can have your own logos as well. So obviously you can have your own logo show up here and then that'll, that'll basically come up after the Unity logo like that. Yep, that looks terrible. That, was, that wasn't supposed to be an actual a thing. <laughs> so you can bring in uh, your own logos in here. All right. Other than that, guys, uh, you can have background opacity for your splash screen and settings like that. Feel free to play around with it. Um, when it comes to other settings, uh, color space gamma is always good. It, it gives you a really good looking colors, but you can try linear as well. Um, and then I would always leave these things by default. I don't change these. Um, build number can be increased with every single new release that you do, but uh, that's optional unless it's required for some sort of reason. Um, I would leave all of these by default as well. Other than that, if you were to look at quality settings, if you go to the quality tab over here in the project settings, guys, here you can set different types of quality settings for your game, right? So ultra right now is the highest option that's available here, um, but you can also create your own quality level and then basically save these settings for those quality, uh, that quality preset, okay? And then you can even create a setting in your game, which I'll cover in a bonus chapter, uh, where you can select which quality level you want for your game. So obviously you can go through all of these and set different values. Right now, by default, I've set my um, game builds to run at ultra, and even the editor builds to run at ultra as well. Um, beyond that, guys, you can check out the graphic settings over here, but there's nothing much you got to do here for standard render pipeline. If you're using URP or HDRP, that's where you'd come here and make some changes. Apart from that, uh, I wouldn't really change anything else, guys. You can simply go for a build here, here, and then it'll ask you where to build this. 
and then you'd select a folder and that'll give you a full executable of your brand new game and uh, basically you can use that executable to create a setup or if you were to upload on steam there's another way of doing that which i can cover on a different bonus chapter but pretty much it guys if you want to build games um build uh, executables from unity uh just make sure you follow these to a t and you'd be good to go uh thanks so much for watching guys